So we're live. Welcome, Philip. And it's amazing. I, I mean, it feels like ages since I've been doing these interviews. Um, and it feels so good to, to be back and chatting to amazing people that I know in my circles. Um, some of you may have seen some of the interviews that I've done before. And I'm very fortunate to have lots of amazing people in my circle of friends and colleagues. And Philip is um, one such person. And his story is very interesting. Um, some of it I actually don't know. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to this, Philip, to find out a little <laughs> bit more. Um, but I know, I, I mean, I know you from the mystery school. And obviously, I know your passion for music. And I know, you know, that you've done ma many amazing sound baths and CDs for, for healing and all that kind of stuff. But what I'd really like to know, first of all, is where, where did your passion for music come from? Like, how did it start? And, and, and where did it take you? Could you could you give us a bit of background? Hey, Kate, thank you for having me on an amazing show. Um, I'm happy to answer as good as I can. Uh, I, I, I have no idea where it came from, probably from God, the universe, or I decided at one point I wanted to be a musician in this life. But um, I was always like drawn to playing guitar or playing bass when I was little, but I never had like the, the, the courage to do it. So I was always listening to music on the back seat of the car of, um, my, of my parents when we go into vacation. But at one point there was a bass player needed in the, our school band. And I was like, oh, I go for that. And then I started uh, becoming a bass player. Um, I got better. Uh, then I became a producer in that band because nobody could know how to record the CDs. And so um, I think my life always developed and I'm filling in the spot that was needed in my circles. <laughs> I love that. I love that, that. How you like say it's a bit accidental, but really probably very magical. <laughs> yeah, very magical. In the end, it was guided and there is always like big, deep love for music yeah, happening. So, so, Philip, I know you spent um, a lot of time in L.A. and you, and you lived in L.A. What, what took you to L.A.? So you're from Germany originally, is that correct? And then and then you've moved to, to L.A. So, so tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in uh, Germany and that day my, my musical success had many bands. And then at one point, uh, my town was not big enough for me, for my energy. So I needed to move to Berlin. Um, because it's like the musical capital of Germany. And I did there work in the music uh, industry and business, worked there with many artists. And at one point, uh, I won the green card, right? Um, because that's what you do. And I never won anything in my life, but I won the green card. And um, after I did the Empower the Self Initiation, I learned a, a thing called the Sanctuary Meditation Method. And I got very clear instructions there that I have to move to Los Angeles on the 29th of August, 2016. And that's what I basically did. And from there, then I did more journeys with the mystery school and more music. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea that you got the green card after you did Empower Thyself. That's amazing. Let's say I got it before, but to really use it and uh, act upon that um, gift from the universe, I, I needed Empower Thyself to really uh, use it, you know. That's interesting, isn't it? Because for those of you that don't know, Empower Thyself is is a, a two day um, course in the Mystery School where you you learn the foundations of metaphysics and and tools, practical tools to help you, and then you receive an initiation. And it's so interesting that you say that it gave you the strength, uh, or or maybe you know the, the you know the the umph to go and 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 take that that gift that you'd already be given because. I think that's the case in our lives. We have so many gifts that are given to us and we don't always have the confidence or the strength to act upon them. So that's lovely to hear, um, you know, how that uh, worked in your life. So, so you got to L.A. So you got to L.A. And, and how was it? That was great. Um, I had, um, yeah. I just had um, not made a fortune, but I made some quite of money with a big success and hit that I had in Germany. So, um I think everything was great in LA and uh, I left all over the place for the last four years, seen ups and downs as well. I did um, many sound, I got really deeply into healing music, like um, how frequency can uh, alter your brainwave levels and studied that quite a while and I was fortunate to, to um, have weekly sessions on Hollywood Boulevard for um, many great also Hollywood actors and actors from all kinds of scenes that are out there. And um, so, yeah, I um help people with sound bath, but also with the mystery school teachings. And it was quite 
quite amazing. I played actually at the Wilton Theater. That was probably the biggest show, uh, which is an amazing theater in LA where the big from even David Bowie has played and uh, quite amazing. Yeah. I always improvise because all the music that I was doing with the healing music, I was always like, I step aside and then the music always flows. So it's always uh, instant compositions. You never know what you get. So that was, I always loved jamming, you know. So tell, tell me about that then. So you don't plan the music. You don't write it as such. You don't plan it. It's you actually just, so you turn up, you know, somebody's going to book you, I don't know, for a sound bath or healing or whatever it is. And then, and then you go and then you just create. Correct. I always love that instant flow, trusting in spirit and that there is music because I, I would, uh, I guess I would call it clear audience. Definitely. I hear music constantly. And um, yeah, I would just like play, uh, have a friend, his name, is, uh, his name is Shane, he plays the bowls and gongs and he was like giving me the note, the uh, foundational frequency and then I was always improvising whole orchestras uh, uh, over that and it was always yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Wow. So you play when you're playing, Philip, just so that everybody knows, mm -hmm. are you playing an instrument? Are you playing the bass or how does it work? How does it, how does a sound bath work or, that, you know, or healing experience work? Since I'm in uh, um, Germany at the moment because of, the, of our current COVID situation, um, I haven't done many sound baths, honestly, but when I did it, I was like, uh, I had a synthesizer in front of me. I had a bass guitar, I had an acoustic guitar, I had some shamanic flutes and I was always like, um, so what's next? And then I got the message and I played it. Um, sometimes I would need more arms to do play everything, but it's always worked out. And so I play many instruments that are needed, you know, remember I was always fitting in what's needed to make something work. I love that. I love that. And so when, when, you know, when you, when you stump, did you stumble upon this gift or, you know, so going back to your bands, going back to, you know, the bands that you played in. And of course, I, I'm guessing that the other band members would need some kind of set um, music, like you had set songs or music that you played, or did you all just jam all the time? And, and you just, if, if I start at the beginning, because I'm originally a rock musician, I played it also in metal bands. I, I also played jazz and won some prizes there, but um, I'm a rock musician at heart. And, and honestly, I, I can say that all with the spiritual seeking before I got on the mystery school path, um, at one point I got pretty dogmatic because I thought that everything has to be mantra music to be close to God, the universe, but that is not a dogma. So right now I'm getting more back in uh, claiming my rock roots because I also started um, uh, singing, taking singing classes this year. So I want to make a new rock band. It takes a little longer than I thought, but um, uh, because I was working with many artists, I was like empowering them, uh, great singers, uh, one of the best singers in Germany. But I'm like, who tells that I cannot sing? It's like the mind, my own uh, conditioning. So. Let's see what I can uh, build on my own. So I coming from rock music, but then I got everything got more spiritual, and now I'm trying to con combining uh, all the frequency stuff that I learned with more heavy tunes. You know. And are there a lot of musicians like you, Philip? Do you think? Have you, uh, you know, do, do do you manage to seek them out? What you know? How, is this a preferred way that magician? Uh, uh, magicians, yeah, and <laughs> of course, uh, you know, um, it, is it a better way to work? Is you know, with music do to you jam, get, or what, what do you mean, like yeah, to, 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 to just create? And you know, do mu musicians prefer that, or do they prefer to have you know, set music? I guess not all of them. And I guess I'm also not perfect. I still have to manage all those create this creative flow that's coming through me to um, uh, you remember idea, thought, plan, action to um, manifest more that creativity. Uh, so I'm still working on that to have all this flow and have more albums coming out more rapidly. Um, so some musicians, some magicians or musicians like to jam. And uh, some others don't, you know, I know, know people that are just like writing and then they compose, but that's how I work. I love jamming and creating with people instantly. Probably that's why also uh, in the past, 
everything float because I'm. I, it's like everything is like a band. Everything is music. We have to see how we where's our salt in the soup, you know. Yeah, yeah. I I Life. love that when we think about ourselves as one big orchestra and when we're all playing together. I mean, it's just it's it's fantastic and you know it, yeah. it's mind blowing. You know what we it can is. do. It is. It is. So tell me, Philip, about. Um, some of the recorded stuff that you've managed to capture because obviously you're you know you're in the moment and you're flowing but i do know that you have some recorded stuff yeah. um how did that work out how did how did that come about i'm i can turn i can talk about the the uh, pop music rock music that i did um i had many connections in in berlin so there was always like the artist reaching out to uh, to myself uh, to me and, and a partner we always were creating then all these songs uh songwriting right and then production and there are many albums out there if anybody wants to know i'm happy to send you send you some links of that more pop music that i did uh uh, or popular music it, it's not like it's not it's it, it has never been cheesy it was always very remote uh, emotional uh, uh deeply uh, i think music with, with value um but when i talk in terms of healing music um i also created a thing called the kabbalah chants with dr Teresa bullard she has um, an, an amazing series that you might also know I, I know you know that series it's called mystery teachings on gaia tv and we created that thing called the kabbalah chants which it's basically like a um, meditative journey through the Kabbalistic tree of life. And it's pretty trippy, honestly. Um, there is one story I want to share. Um, you know, we have 11 albums and um, there is one album, of course, about the sphere, Givura, and it's the color red. And I was like, my ego said, oh, you created this. You can do this. You can listen to it while driving because we say, please don't listen to it while driving. So I was putting it on and I had like... Um, my, my, everything got a little bit uh, not so physical and, and suddenly like there was a red car manifesting in front of me and a woman in the red dress and I was like then it got pretty trippy and I stopped listening to it so I would only uh, invite you to listen to it and so yeah it's really healing I highly recommend that check it out you know so how did that come about? Because I know a lot of our uh, listeners um, are big fans of uh, Dr. Teresa Bullard's show and, and herself and, and, and how she combines the science aspect. I know everybody is, you know, raving about it. So, but how, how, so how did the Kabbalah chants come about then? How did, how did that manifest? Well... If you remember, I did Empower the Self, the initiation, that class in, in London, by the way, in 2016. And um, I, th I think that that hierarchy of light or my higher self, however you want to call it in this moment, um, they it brought me to L.A. And it also I, I learned that I had to do that Kabbalistic uh, Kabbalah Ascension journey. And it basically was one fruit of my first Kabbalah Ascension journey that was like, oh, let's do the music together. And then I started, um, because every sphere has a different musical note, and I was starting to calculate the corresponding uh, frequencies, um, all in 432 hertz that are very beneficial to our body. Uh, and then I was like, like Teresa, want to put something together here? So, um, yeah, we, we did it all, recorded her voice in a Kabbalistic temple, and was I was lying on the ground, honestly, when we recorded it, because there was so much energy happening. Um, and you can hear that. In that recording so ta so you mentioned um the hertz and how it's related to healing can can you expand on that for people that don't perhaps know or understand because we put music on and we say oh yeah it makes us feel better or oh, oh yeah i really love this song and it makes me feel happy and joy but i know there is this movement of um this sound being healing and and in some cases in some studies that i've listened to um where sound people believe that sound has been responsible for eradicating disease out of their body mm -hmm. so can you expand on this and tell us a little bit about that sure um there is also um one episode of the mystery teachings fr from gaia with teresa dr teresa bullard uh, it's called transcendent sound i think it's from the second season so i'd highly recommend to watch that but um every time our energetic being gets uh, also ourselves gets 
more in contact with uh, new new frequencies that can be that are of a higher higher frequency. We build neural pathways. So um, if you listen to um, um, music that is aligned to sacred geometric structures of nature, and there's, by the way, an amazing class called Sacred Geometry. It was my first class within a mystery school that I highly re re recommend to check out. Um, sound shapes matter. Um, so if you, you can imagine if you um, have water and you just scream at the water, there will be ripples, right? So... Um, Think of that. You create always with your words energies. And there is like um, um, uh, frequencies that are very beneficial to our cells because our, our body is also water. And um, that also transcends or, or brings me to the point that everything is frequency and vibration. So um, every thought has a vibration and our brain has also a frequency. And I would like to show you because I've just prepared it here our brain, how our brain sounds. If that's okay, I can show you, Kate. Is that okay? One second. So, I show you a frequency here. Can you hear that? Can you hear that frequency? One second. Here we go. Can you hear that? <laughs> can you hear it? It sounds like the autobahn or the highway or like a lawnmower, right? So basically, this is our brain in 35 hertz. It's like the beta brainwave state. It's it's a good brainwave state when we basically want to work out. And I know you do that. That's great. But um, most people are in this brainwave state when they're also stressed. So what we do with um, a brainwave entrainment or also meditation, we want to bring this state lower. And maybe you can already feel the frequency shifting. We are now at 10 hertz, like 20 hertz lower. If any of the um, audience want to take a breath and just try to relax in that pulse. I know it's still fast, but it's different than what we heard before. Um, this is yeah, close to the theta brainwave state, but it's still alpha. And with meditation, we basically shift our brainwave levels lower, here, and lower. And I would invite you to take a breath and just relax into the pulse. That's your brain in delta. Yeah. So this is basically what how first of all our brain sounds when we do meditation what we can do by do meditation or also listening to sounds music that is tuned to certain frequencies that will bring us naturally into more a relaxed state and um i hope that answers your question i'm very chilled out right now <laughs> Let's bring you back in beta state. Thanks. Yeah. It's so nice. It's just, you know, just so nice. Um, uh, it's, it's fascinating, I think, to hear you talk in that way that, oh, this is how your brain sounds. Mm -hmm. You know? So for yeah. a lot of people out there, you know, we, we, we don't associate our brain having sound. True, true. Yeah, well pointed out. Yeah, never thought about it, but that's, yeah. And, and I think common. that's really amazing because, okay, so now we've our brain sound and we can start measuring things in sound. And then that helps me to understand how sound would affect me if I have a sound you know, that my brain waves are and what have you. Um, so when we're talking about this healing, um, this healing sound, do you have anything that you can, that I, I know you do everything in the moment, but is there anything that you have that you could share yeah. with us? Of course, definitely go on www.kabbalachance.com. There is a lot of healing music. But um, in terms of other stuff, I haven't um, uh, put out there a lot yet. But um, I can send you. I can send you the audience whoever wants um, more links to more music. And um, 
it's out there definitely yeah we'd really like that i'm going to put this all in the in the comments box so people can go and check it out and they can you know go and um you know really have that experience because um i think it's one of those things where you, when when you have that direct experience it's it, it, it's there are no words really yeah. to describe yeah. what it does um and, and and how it affects the body and such like um what there is your, also there's sorry, also good on. there's also um every um wednesday and it's wednesday today every wednesday at nine o'clock german time and at 12 uh, noon la time I, I host with a friend from an amazing um, la rock band called jaguar twin a max meditation with on top the sound healing frequencies that i'm um, doing and it's always like it's it's a great combination so you're invited one time tonight we have by the way a special guest shani uh, lera she's she's a guest tonight and it's always really nice gathering of highly great people oh yeah i've, I've heard really amazing uh, reports back um pe people are always you know a lot of my uh, clients um listen in and tune in and they've been telling me how amazing it is so please amazing. do check that out i'm gonna we'll put all of the comments um all of this information in the chat box for people because they might not be able to remember it but yeah. um, that would be phenomenal mm -hmm. so so Philip, this sound, this journey with sound and healing, can you tell us now, I, you've explained to us, to us a little bit how the mystery school path helped you to take those opportunities in your life, such as go to LA, and then of course to create the Kabbalah chants and such like. So how do you see sound working in in the mystery school path, you know, for you, how, how do you combine it? How does it work? Mm -hmm. uh, on the mystery school path, there's also a lot of toning involved and uh, uh, chanting at, at points. And when we chant or tone very sacred words, we raise our frequency of our cells and we connect to a more higher vibration of thoughts that are, I would say, even maybe divine thoughts. So you have much more inspiration also for all the musicians out there. I mean, um, it's it's our, our doubt that kills inspiration also non-musicians, right? That's how it is, the doubt. But um, as a musician, who is a magician, right? As we, as we know, um, you are like constantly uh, improvising or if you're a jazz player and you're thinking of what could you play next, but there is an infinite uh, well of inspiration to tap into, but we need to get our minds out of the way so we can tap into that ocean that is always here. And definitely that's, that's the, all the mystery schools that helped me to um, clear the mind and um, be in that more tapped in truth uh, of myself and be more one with the instrument, I can say. Yeah, so it's like really creating magic that's this reservoir of magic you're just tapping into it for people to listen to it because like everything in the universe has a sound as we were like we were just chatting about so magic has a sound mm -hmm. and you know that it, how beautiful for you to be able to tap into that and to bring that through and when we're when you know when when we're you know you're talking to other magician um musicians i think we're just going to call the magicians from now on sure let's go because I think that's what we're being told here. <laughs> Definitely. When I talk to other magicians, yes. When we talk to other magicians who also are mag uh, musicians, um, when you, when you speak to them about um, this creativity and and how they can tap into that, do do you think that this is the future of music? Do you, do you think this is where it's going, or how how do they respond to it? I hope I hope so that this is the uh, future of music. So and um, because many great initiates, be it Bach or, or Beethoven, they were like bringing music to this planet that were, was not here before. And I think we need music that is not coming from the box of the matrix of the world. So I definitely would say we need more to step out of the way. So more uh, 
music, divine music can flow in, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying even in an esoteric or woo-woo way, just the music of our hearts and that we're not, as songwriters, I would say, sometimes we like, we look for a bit, or I know that from my, um, from my past, sometimes we look for big hits and then we try to rewrite that hit, just do a little bit of tweaks here and there. So, and, and when, then we hope that will be the next hit. But that's not how it works. If you think of Michael Jackson, I um, start with a man in the mirror. That this was our so original music lines that have not been here before, be it lyrics or even melodic wise. And I think uh, if you want to really have an impact in 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 the world, um, you definitely need to tap into something higher and look within than without what others already did to really shift the world into a better place. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that inspiration to artists out there, not just people that play music, but art in general. It's, you know, it's when when you when you are tapping into your individuality, that that part of you that's so unique, that's mm. not nobody else can replicate it. And and when you're truly in touch with that part, then that's where the magic of art and creativity comes from and and it's beautiful to watch in others and it's beautiful to be part of that whether you're listening or you're watching or it's a sensory experience or what have you and uh, and it would be just so amazing if we could um have more of that in, in our world and for me music was a big part of um growing up in terms of being a positive and you talk about Michael Jackson because Michael Jackson was one of my you know b biggest heroes I, I, I you know I used to think at night I was like oh my god positive thoughts positive thoughts because the world was kind of you know a scary place to be and it was music that got me through a lot of the time music and movies and um I know a lot of the music that I hear my um, nieces and my stepson play isn't always that positive or well, doesn't sound that positive um and so you know for me I, I i i would really love to see that more so than ever you know coming back into um you know into that divine state but like you say it doesn't have to be woo woo it's yeah. you know when, when music is divine it's like oh my goodness it's such a good it's joyous and it's a good vibe and it makes you feel alive you know yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it makes you think as well yes deeper yeah. yeah exactly exactly we want more of that so philip could you give us some parting last words um on music or comments that, anything that you like to share um, with us all. I would definitely say for all the audience here, if you like that energy or you felt that there was some truth, I would highly uh, maybe come tonight for the meditation, but also um, check out more the Empower the Self Initiation. Um, there's a thing before that you have to do, it's called the life activation. It's also really, really an amazing thing that activates more potential uh, within and um, clears a lot of energies that hold us back and um, that's the, I would highly would recommend. Other than that, I I pray for all the music in the hearts of the people to come forward. That people also have the trust to follow their calling. Because I believe also not only all music and that what we need is within, but also all the abundance or the love that we're seeking is within. We have to just share our truth of our heart. So um, that's that's for today <laughs> oh, thank you so much i know i really feel like um it's so inspiring to do these interviews from with people that are from very different backgrounds and we all share that same passion is that we want everybody to do well we want everybody to be successful and it's all of us or none of us and you know we're on the journey as well and and it just it melts my heart every time because i know each one of you that i've interviewed is like come on we can all do this together and you know having those those different backgrounds we can see clearly that um the path is universal is that that you know that we can come from any walk of life and it will get us to where we're going it could be to la or it could be <laughs> you to know London. Or to London, yes, who knows, who knows. Um, 
And I'd love it if maybe, you know, in a few weeks or, or so we could come back and talk about David Bowie, because I know um, you did a, a, a wonderful article on David Bowie and uh, his journey of music and magic and um and i would love to talk to you about that um maybe soon if you have time sure let's find a time and date and let's make it happen you know make it happen now philip i'm going to put um you know if we can put those um the, all that information in the, the the comments box and then everyone that is listening here please go to philip's um meditation tonight it is amazing um i get rave reviews all of the time and um it, it's not to be missed and of course there are other ways that you can listen to all of philip's amazing um stuff and and uh, like we said generally he does it live and you know so when there is something recorded it you know it's it a will, precious it's thing most of the time the, the stuff that will be coming out it will be also a one take so it's like 20 minutes of improvisation but it's also people have amazing journeys with that so people say it's very pure let's see what you guys think yes yeah. i love that <laughs> direct experience direct experience lovely thank you philip and uh, lots of love to everyone out there tonight um uh, enjoy your sound bath if that's where you're going yeah